Hi, this is Alexander Meek from Australia and this is my uh, scratch built warbird workshop or actually my garage where I'm building my latest warbird which is a B29 Super Fortress 1944 RC electric scratch built using the flight test technique of foam board and hot glue so it's very standoff scale but also it's been built to the scale dimensions it has flown probably about five times now quite flies quite well so we're going to present you with the uh, the build process and a bit of a video of it flying so I hope you enjoy this 38 years ago in 1978 I designed this scale Boeing B29 with uh, flaps, bombay doors, drop bombs. It had four 0.15 glow motors, weighed about nine pounds. Looked really good, did a good job, spent a lot of time on it. First flight, I think uh, one of the motors must have cut out, it was a long distance away, and it uh, spiralled into our local golf course. And that was the end of that. So I'm using these plans and sketches from this design to build this scratch built Boeing B29 which doesn't take me so long to build. Here are the basic specifications. It's a B29 Super Fortress and built, originally built in 1944 for World War II. We're using 4 off NTM prop drives 28-26A 1200kV 17 amp maximum electric motors. With those we use four off 30 amp minimum ESCs, each with a ferrite coil on the lead to the receiver. We're using one 4000 milliamp hour 4S battery, 20C. Gives us approximately about 15 minutes flying time, depending how fast you fly it. Using uh, eight by four APC propellers, has a span of 1860 millimeters or 73 inches weighs 3620 grams or 8.3 pounds has a wing loading of 25.65 ounces per square foot which falls into the warbirds class C of G is 120 millimetres from the leading edge at the fuselage or 200 millimetres from the trailing edge. The wheels, which I had to increase in size because of the grass field we take off on, we have dual front wheels, two and a half inch diameter using 3.7 millimetre music wire. Uh, height is 120 millimetres from the fuselage to the centre line of the axle. Then the rear wheels are two off dual wheels or four, four total three inch diameter using 2.8 millimeter music wire and the height from the fuselage to the center line of the axle is 110 millimeters servos using five corona cs 238 mg at 22 grams each and we're using a free sky v8 fr-11 receiver with a Hobby Eagle A3 3 axis gyro and stabilizer. Um, you basically could get away with just a four channel um, transmitter and receiver you know, of any type and possibly you probably don't really need a stabilizer but I like to use them. They're good in high winds and buffety winds. I've used the orange um, receiver stabilizer and they work quite well too. With the aid of computers and the fox program called Camtasia we can show it flying before we build it so before we build I thought I'd throw in the uh, video of the B29 uh, successfully flying this is about probably its third flight it flies uh, quite well have to do some small changes between the first and this flight had to move the battery back a little bit and uh, increase the wheels and change the thickness of the music wire on the front wheel 
plenty of power. And the motor's well synchronized. You don't have to do anything. Please note I strongly recommend the ferroid coils on the lead from the ESCs to the receivers uh, to help in stabilization of the motors. They really work well. Solves any problems you might have with the motors being not synchronized. Made note on landing into the wind and taking off crosswind. To start building we need some information, so uh, YouTube, uh, pictures, etc. are good places to go and look for profile publications, 101 and other information, and three views. This is where I found my three views and also had the publications. And then we can start to enlarge it to the uh, size that you want to build your plane. You can go to uh, my site here and learn how to enlarge and print three view uh, plans for model aircraft. And this is a sketch of the airfoil sections I used. So I started to cut them out of uh, 5mm foam board in pairs, sanded them up and got them ready. Also prepared uh, two spars made out of uh, two layers of five millimeter foam board, reinforced in the center with uh, ply doublers. Got all the airfoil sections ready. Cut them out to for the gap for the spars, and then uh, proceeded to glue them all together with hot glue. Notice the spacing of the airfoil sections are bigger towards the outside. Then we put some ply plates for the landing gear, hot glue them on and start on the aileron uh, sections made out of a sandwich of foam board then uh, tape it down with sandpaper. Then we start to uh, make some clearance holes for the uh, electrical cables that will be running to the motors, the ESCs and servos. Then we prepare some string to run down through the hole so that we can pull through wires later on, the servo wires, electrical wires, etc. Then we prepare the wing for covering. We make a pattern out of brown paper, cut out the uh, wing out of 3mm foam board do one wing at a time, uh, 
remove the paper from the inside of the front nose uh, draw on some where all the stuff goes using white glue on the inside and probably hot glue on the outer edges uh, clamp it all down start to work on the nose rolling the paper foam board around that nose section um, using hot glue where you can but basically a lot of white glue um, because uh, the hot glue goes off too quick. We had packing tape as reinforcement, a bit of strength, top and bottom of the wing, balsa tips, notice that the bottom sheet ends there, it doesn't go all the way to the top edge. That's the tape on the bottom. Reinforcing tape down the centre line. We now start on the fuselage using some uh, about quarter inch hardwood stringers with some ply and five millimetre foam board um, formers and trying to keep everything straight I use a bit of uh, aluminium wire with the stringers to uh, keep it all in a straight line this will go over the wing section so I've cut out a bit of a slot there for the wing and on one end I'm going to uh, well, I was planning on joining the other half with some uh, dowel rods and some clips uh, it changed a bit as I went along and probably even in the end I might just glue it all together now you've got to keep it all in line on the right wing incidence using hot glue Now put the aileron servos in and run the wires through the wing to the centre. We use a Y cable for the ailerons, join them into one point. Uh, this is the uh, joining part of the dowel rods, and the clips. That'll be joined onto the rear section. So we start on the front fuselage section where originally I was intending to put the battery but I found because of the CG needed to go rearward I had to uh, extend it and make it go back about one battery length. But uh, the front compartment comes in handy for adjusting the uh, steerable nose leg where the servo room is. So I put this hard block in for a bearing for the uh, front steerable nose leg. Shape the uh, nose just out of foam board. Also was designing for two smaller batteries. So this is the final position where we had to put two hatches and move the battery back one whole battery length. The front hatch was handy for getting to the adjust and adjust the front steerable nose leg and the servo. We now added some wooden beams for the motors, about 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter. Hot glued them into the wing, cut a few holes to get in there. They went as far back as the front spar. Made sure they were all at the same uh, level, straight out and straight out. Put the face plates on, top and bottom. There's a hole for ventilation. Used um, foam board to space them appropriately. These beams were later shortened to the first face plate.
Then we made the wheels using a MIG welder, music wire. Later on we changed that design and in increased the wheel diameter of the wheels because of our fields, grass field, with a lot of rabbit holes. So this is the new design. Uh, the front steerable nose wheel was a, a thicker music wire than the two rear. Find that in the specifications. These are the old design wheels. The servo in the front nose. Now this was changed later on, new position, with the leg going backwards, so it's always sort of self centering. Less stress. That's the new position of the leg, straight up and straight out, and a little collar right on the top. Drill the hole right through. Gives it a bit of support. And there's more views of the motor mounts. Starting to uh, make sure the wires are coming out the right places. Screwed the uh, landing gear into that ply plate with some small self tapper screws. A motor mounting plate was attached to the firewall with blind nuts. As per there. Later on we cut back the arms and the shape of the motor mounting plate was changed to this revised design. Here's how we remove the uh, motor. All the wiring is parallel, all the positive leads are joined together and all the negative leads are joined together. Uh, the same with the power sensing leads used by cables. The ESC stabiliser and receiver were located about the CG. I tried some aluminium covered cardboard um, looked good but uh, didn't like it on the fuselage but kept it for fairings on the motors we now start on the rear section made out of 5mm foam board with a vertical and horizontal stabiliser using the 3.5 ply plate with dowels to join it to the front section uh, do not glue the horizontal stabiliser until it's skinned so I use 5mm foam bo board there for the formers etc this is the vertical stabiliser reinforcement made out of 5mm foam board and a large coffee stirrer uh, I put these skewers in but uh, don't I'll remove them later on, don't need them they cut out the hinge, the hinge is cut from the bottom up leaving paper intact on top and bevel the edge to allow hinging and tape top and bottom so we're using packing tape there for the hinges, clear one you can use whatever you like we use 1.8mm music wire coupler within the 5mm foam board couple the two uh, elevators together this is the top side of the horizontal stabiliser top view we apply packing tape hinges first and then we hot glue on top the 5mm foam board that's the top side view round off the edges if you like the rudder we bevel the edge and tape packing tape both sides still do not glue in that horizontal stabiliser yet Uh, be careful of the uh, angle of the uh, this. Mine was not big enough. We add the vertical stabiliser reinforcement, the elevator horn, the elevator servo, the rudder horn and the rudder servo. Do not glue in the horizontal stabiliser yet. Put in the cables, more formers. Now the skin is made out of 3mm foam board and we remove the paper from the inside to allow curving. Originally I was going to use one piece uh, but uh, it didn't work too good. So we used two sheets, basically two, two halves. Put in some wood blocks added for joining screws later on. 
so we start with half a sheet. We uh, hot glue the outer edges with white glue in in the middle on the formers. So you hot glue one edge, then start bending, put the white glue in, and then hot glue the outer edge, the other edge. To cut out the uh, covering, I use brown paper patterns oversized and then trimmed on site. So here she is, skin's finished, ready to uh, glue in the horizontal stabiliser. Start on the ailerons, uh, cut them out using packing tape both sides for hinges and bevel the bottom edge of the aileron. We then uh, glue hot glue in the aileron servo and I made a horn from a credit card. Added two wooden blocks for the joining screws. Use three millimeter foam board for the uh, covering. Remove the layer of paper on the inside for easier curving. Added the nose wheel servo, hot glued it in. Use Sally Spack Filler Rapid for filling in the uh, holes, etc. Nice and light. Three millimeter foam board, inside cover removed. formers to help build up the wheel wells. This is the original wheel design screwed into the ply plates and hot glued over the top. The SC, a bit of ventilation for it too. There's the revised design of the engine mounting firewall, the air cooling vents. It's a new design for the engine firewall removable. Uh, made a bolted cowl and then stuck that on the motor firewall. So the motor is easily removed from that firewall. Take shape, looking like a plane. Hanging from my ceiling. Started to make the uh, gun mounts. I used uh, two 12 volt car globes. Stuck there, not required those sticks. I decided to show in greater detail how I joined the front and rear sections together with clamps. So I used ply formers. Uh, one with four dowels in it and some clamps, paper clamps had paper clamps top and bottom and a connector plate top and bottom so I took the arms off the clamps so there was four wood blocks added top and bottom and two paper clamps There it is in the finished detail with the connector plate on top of two screws, top and bottom, and the paper clamp. Got a bit of a hole. Later on I basically glued them together, but uh, this is if you haven't got room to put in your car. So here we are with the first uh, coat of paint. And I had to revise the wheels. So here we are MIG welding cross member making it all straight, lining it up. This is the final design of the wheels. There's a 12 volt light bulb, worked quite well. Here's the servos mounted, hot glued in. Use hook and loop tape for the uh, aluminium covers. And our aluminium flashing and the packing tape hinges. Put a four cell battery, this is final position, didn't need to be so far forward. Cut a cover from a plastic bottle for the receivers and stabiliser. 
This is the final design. I found that an old flat hot iron is good for smoothing out hot glue rather than sanding it. Just used a spray can of uh, aluminium paint, held it a good distance away so it doesn't uh, melt any foam exposed. Fitted in the back of my uh, station wagon so eventually I just glued the back end on. Okay. So this is about the third flight after building. I've had many more since then. Took me a long time to do this video. This is a point where I changed the undercarriage. The front wheel is more self-centering to where it should be. And got a bit more height off the ground so we're not cutting grass. As you can see our field's a bit bumpy. And sometimes we can have some long grass there. I'm taking off a crosswind at the moment. It doesn't take much space to take off. Plenty of power with those four motors. I did find that the uh, horizontal stabiliser was not at the right angle, needed a bit more incidence, so I had to fly with a bit of up elevator. Apart from that, she was quite stable, excellent flyer, really happy with it, plenty of lift, didn't seem to have any stalling characteristics, problems. I can actually do loops and rolls with it, not in this film. So I'm coming into wind now for landing. As I went on, you could slow that down a fair bit, you can come in fairly slow. Fairly easy to fly actually. I'm not an expert, but... Uh, it's not that hard to handle. seem to average a good, uh, when I'm flying, about ten, at least 10 minutes, probably get a bit more out of it. Got a bit close then, but anyway. Not very much standoff scale, but I'm happy with that. It doesn't take too long to build. And if I better build a second model, it'll probably take me about two weeks to build. And not expensive to build. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this and uh, see you again next time, next video.